Hello everybody, we've got a special, special, special treat today. Welcome to the home studio where we are filming on Zoom. First time we're doing this officially for YouTube. So I hope that's going to work really, really well and that you're going to enjoy this amazing demonstration. One of our crystal surgery instructors, Anastasia Prilidis, has put together a demonstration of how we use crystals as tools in crystal surgery and you've often heard me saying this is what distinguishes crystal surgery from other crystal healing techniques and this is a lovely and extraordinary demonstration that makes it very clear it gives you an overview about choosing the tools using the tools and some of the things we do with the tools and forms an excellent explanation of what we are doing in crystal surgery so I hope you this enjoy this. Let's say hello to Anastasia. Hello. Hi, Anastasia. It's so good to see you here. Thank you for doing this. And I'm going to hand everything over to you now. Please go forward with the demonstration that you've prepared. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Um, I'm Anastasia, and I'm super excited to be talking to you about tools today. Um, before I got into, before I became a crystal healer professionally, what I used to do was work in a shop. So I have a huge amount of experience working with tools and having tools, and I'm really excited about lots of different types of tools. Um, so I'm really uh, pleased that I get to share all of that, my excitement with you today. Um, so the first thing I want to talk about is how to identify what crystals will make good tools. And one of the first things that you can look at is shape. Now, we all have familiarity with different tools, right? We use wrenches, screwdrivers, um, all sorts of different tools um, around our homes and in our lives. Um, so we're familiar with the way tools look and these shapes. And you look for similar shapes in, tool, uh, in crystals that you have in your tools. So for instance, here I have a paint scraper, right, with a blade on the end. And here I have a crystal tool with a blade on the end. And I'm actually going to zoom in so that you can see them a little bit closer. So let me change to my other camera. And there we go. So we've got a nice close up picture. And I'm going to use my, my dental pick actually to point. So we've got this sharp blade edge here. And I've also got this sharp blade edge on the crystal, right? So when I see a crystal that has a shape that's similar to a tool that I'm used to using, it's an indication that it might be a really good um, tool for that sort of work in the energy system. And here's another crystal that's got a really sharp blade edge here. And this one's really special. So it's got this feather shaped blade edge. So I've got the long sort of sharp edge that I can use for scraping here. What kind of crystal is that, Anastasia? Oh, this is Vivianite. And I'll give you a little, I'm going to backlight it so you can see some of its color. It's this really beautiful blue green. That is gorgeous. Is it a phantom? This one is, this one is, um, not all of the ones that I have here. And actually, is that also can... Vivianite? This is also Vivianite. This one's a clearer green. Oh. Um, and this one's one that's got strong phantoms in. I might have to take a, a closer view in order for you to see the phantoms in it, but um, it's a really, really spectacular stone. I just found this at Denver um, at the Gem and Mineral Show last month. And I couldn't walk away from it. I fell in love with it instantly. It's so beautiful and it's so fantastic. Um, and it had something really unusual. It has the, the tool edge, looks just like a wrench. So do you see the mini oh, wrench? Oh yeah, there? I can see that. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and so I use it for actually turning and unlocking things in the energy system. It's really, it's a really fantastic tool and an unusual find. Um, I was so pleased um, <laughs> when I came across them. They were um, really, really spectacular. So here's another piece. 
and it's got a little hook. Yeah, I see it. You for getting in there, right? And I think it's kind of funny that all these tools are Vivianite tools. <laughs> <laughs> How fitting is what I could say. Yes. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> it's kind of perfect, but um, I think it's uh, it's really nice how obviously they mirror existing tools right so we've got another little point here yes just like this point on the stencil pick that i've got i'm very interested that you've got wrenches and screwdrivers and so on because i use things for sewing when i'm looking for tools i'm thinking sewing and i'm thinking uh household cleaning like brooms and vacuum cleaners and so on so all of these versions of tools are important i'm just fascinated that you you've chosen these shop tools as you call them yeah well that's i think we all um we as humans are, are tool users in a variety of different situations right yes, um, if yes. you're used to right. household tools or sewing tools then you know maybe when you're looking at a tool like this instead of seeing a dental pick you see a needle right um this yes and i these are these little ones are sculpture tools, and then these other ones are sort of bigger shop tools, um, but they're all things that come from my particular tool use background, so it makes it easy for me to identify, and I think everybody, when you're looking at for tools, um, it's really important to use whatever your background is, because you know somebody with a different tool use background might see stones that I didn't, because it looks like the tools that they use in their lives. Um, exactly, exactly, yeah. good point. Yeah. So I think the only other I wanted to look at these feathers again, because they have this sort of a tiny scraper too, and also this like turning, turning action. <laughs> um, I could go through every piece of Vivianite I have. <laughs> they're all, they're all no, so show us more, show us more. Show us more, show us more. Okay, so <laughs> this one has this fantastic little point here. And then the other side, and I'm going to show it sort of from the side here, it's got all these tiny little scraper bits. So you can really sort of get in like that. And then more of a hook here with a little point. Mm. This one actually also could be used. So are you going to show us how this works? I am going to show you how it works. Oh, OK. We're going to have Can't wait. Tell with tools. I'm going to put some of these tools to the side and we'll change background so that you can see the next piece. So when we're looking at etheric tissue in the energy field, and especially things that we're looking to remove, um, it can present in a bunch of different ways. Um, so I've got a bunch of different sort of slides that we can show. Um, so first I'm going to demonstrate scraping so i've got my paint scraper tool right here that i showed before and scraping is one of the skills in crystal surgery it is it's, an, it's a skill that people don't understand so let's see how you demo so here we go it's a pushing skill <laughs> and that's exactly how it is isn't it when you're working to scrape something off the energy field it is. It actually requires a little bit of elbow grease. And what I will say with, when you're working with crystals, especially with Vivianite, because it can be a little bit delicate, you want to make sure you're putting the elbow grease into the push and not into clamping down hard on the crystal with your hand. So you want to be have a nice hold on the crystal with your hand. But most of the push is going into the across scraping. And it does take a little bit of work, right? Yes, because I see sometimes making what I call a scooping action when they're meant to be scraping. And I'm always saying it's like scraping ice off a windscreen and you've got to put that effort yeah. in and that same scraping action. I agree. Yeah, there we are. Fabulous demo. And as often happens in the energy system, we don't necessarily get the whole of it at once, right? We do what's ready to come out. Um, and here we go. We'll clean up a little bit. <laughs> yes, and in crystal surgery, we use the vacuum for that cleanup. Yeah. So that's one way of working with a tool. And again, that's my scraper. And, I'll, and a bladed tool like this is what you would use for that action. Scrape, right? 
Right. And the first time we use scraping in crystal surgery is when we do basic detox. And that's when that action and skill came about was when doing that. Ooh, what you got there? So this is a, another formation of etheric tissue that you might come across. Um, sometimes instead of a big scrape, you want to be able to sort of dig in with your little hooked tools. So here I've got my hooked dental pick, right? And my, here's one of the Vivianite tools that's got like a fine point on it. Or here, this is the one that's got the really exciting hook, right? It looks just like it. Um, and this etheric tissue is in the energy field? Uh, it can be in the energy field or in the energy body, depending on where you've decided to work. Okay. All right. So oh. the energy field is around the physical body and there can be etheric tissue there. There is etheric tissue there. It's made up of etheric tissue. And then the energy body is inside the physical body as a duplicate of the physical body. And there's a different kind of etheric tissue there. Yeah. But these tools will work in both kinds of etheric tissue. Exactly. Okay. Good. So, um, so sometimes we're looking to get a little bit more, more delicate work rather than sort of a broad scraping. So here I'm using my dental pick to sort of pick out, right? And get into this very particular bit of tissue. Have you got an example about when you would be using something like this? Like under what condition? Under what condition? Um, sometimes I would use this just based on how the etheric tissue works. Yes. Um, right? Like if you're looking at it and it's a and it's a big mass, sort of like the other paint splotch that I had, um, then you might want to really just sort of broadly get over the whole thing. But sometimes you are looking at things that are more fibrous in the energy system um, or you need to work more delicately. We can only take as much um, out as a person is going to be able to integrate and incorporate um, in the one session. So if you're working with a delicate area, like for instance, unbinding the heart is really delicate. And sometimes there are lots of, uh, what if we put this here? So you might have fibers that connect the heart and are binding it to other areas of the body. And in that case... Yes, and in unbinding the heart, we're... we're um taking out the tissue etheric tissue that is binding around the heart and that is actually in the energy body we actually cut open the energy field with our crystal scalpels as it were and then we go in and start removing this binding that's on the uh, around the etheric tissue of the heart and this is how we do it yeah. with a, a tool that will scrape it off and pull it off in this fashion and it is fine work and we also know not to do too much at one time yeah and so we're and gonna it is exactly it. like that it's an excellent excellent visual and i've got one more bring in so sometimes um not only is there too much for us to take at once, but there'll be other structures um, embedded in the etheric tissue. So this blue, I've got a cord, and there's a little bit of netting that I've made with some yellow over here. And the netting is hardened etheric tissue from past events and experiences, isn't it? The netting. And the cords are coming in from other people. That's the cording of connection. Is that right? That is, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. those are the reference points. So for something like this. And that's a cord. Is that a cord? Yep, this is a cord. Okay. So what I'm doing is I'm removing the tissue that would prevent me from being able to remove this. Oh, uh, because the cord's actually grown into the etheric tissue, so you have to release it. Exactly. And then once I've got enough of it out of the way, I can take it out. Wow. Right? And the same thing might happen with netting. So I'm not trying to take all of the clay off of this thing, uh, off of this piece of glass right now. You're I'm just, just trying, trying to release the netting. Yeah, you don't want to do too much digging around. Yeah. Uh, because it changes too much too quickly. There we go. And we've almost got this piece free. 
So when we do an extraction, that's what we're doing, isn't it? We're pulling yeah. that netting out. There we Ooh, go. Great demo. <laughs> and again, I'm going to clean up my extra clay. And again, that's where we use the vacuum tool, which is a hematite coated quartz is what we use as a vacuum. Oh, good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> as I sweep, we can. <laughs> that's it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to demonstrate sort of the similar actions with um, Vivianite. So this is like an application of those skills. Yes. You're going to show us an actual procedure that uses them. And I'm going to um, read the, de the procedure first to tell you a little bit about what it is. And I'll switch my camera back so you can see my face when I'm talking. <laughs> Uh, That's great. Yeah. So the um, technique that I, or the procedure that I'm going to um, demonstrate today is called release from oppression with Vivianite. Its purpose, speaking from the heart is difficult for some due to trauma, fear from abuse, or simply the idea that children should be seen and not heard, or the repeated experience of not being heard. Additionally, many people feel that their truth is scary, or will cause them trouble. The energy field becomes dense, collapsed, and choked as a result of this familial and cultural oppression. Use of Vivianite in this technique lifts the collapsed, dense areas of the field and clears the entangled choking effect, releasing the oppression from the energy field and enabling the client. Oops, I lost my place. <laughs> <laughs> that happens all the time. Take a moment and find your place. It's very interesting. You need to hear it. I should, I should put it here so that I could see it right with the camera, but I, I don't have a telephone. <laughs> no, we need a prompt board, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Often have I wished for one. Uh, so let's see. We are the use of Vivianite in this technique lifts the collapsed, dense areas of the field and clears the entangled choking effect, releasing oppression from the energy fields and enabling the client to speak their truth from the heart. Vivianite essentially scrapes off the fear that prevents the heart from communicating. This action is profoundly healing to the heart as well as empowering to the throat chakra, the center of self-expression as the flow from the heart to the throat is opened. Isn't that beautiful? It is beautiful. <laughs> So, and it works, but we does. didn't put it in the crystal surgery textbook because we couldn't get the Vivianite. And then suddenly there was a new pocket of Vivianite available. And so we're back in business with the Vivianite technique. I'm so excited because I love the Vivianite technique. I'm actually going to show, show off my, it's very tiny. We'll put it in front of my hands so that you can see it at all. So I've had this piece of Vivianite for a very long time. And you'll notice that it is a lot less fancy than all of the ones that I was showing off and that it is a lot tinier. Um, but it's been um, my friend and, and a very useful tool for a very long time. Um, and I had gotten a question actually when we were doing this, this presentation earlier. Um, do you need a fancy piece of Vivianite to do the technique? And the answer is no, because you can do everything with this. But it is nice to have fancy tools if we want to have fancy tools. Anyway, my friend. <laughs> That's how I feel about my stones. They're my friends and my teachers and yeah. my support system and it's everything. <laughs> Co-workers, <laughs> team players, the works. Sometimes they're my boss too. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's true. They're very bossy, aren't they? I don't. You said it. You're the one who said that. <laughs> I don't mind. They know what they're doing. All right. So I've got my main proxy crystal here, and I'm tuning it to me. I'm gonna work on myself, and I'm putting some support stones. And for me, these are orange calcite hearts under the proxy crystal, and I'm gonna connect the proxy crystal to myself and then light up the orange calcite. Ah, uh, there we go. That's nice. I feel like I should have put the proxy crystal in the orange calcite for the whole talk. It's so soothing. <laughs> but then you wouldn't get to see me turn it on, so. There you go. Yeah. All right, we'll go here. 
So this is a piece of rose quartz that I'm going to use to represent my heart chakra. It's a piece of blue-green calcite that I'm gonna use for the high heart. And then aquamarine for my throat. I'm gonna put in some quartz crystals to be the connection between those places. So you the pink stone, the rose quartz is the heart. Then yep. what color is the next stone? It's a little hard to see. It's blue green. Blue green. Right. Okay, that, oh, yeah. that okay. And that's the high heart, so where the thymus is. Mm -hmm. And then you've got aquamarine. Yeah, and you can see it's it's shape there. Yes. And that's the throat chakra. And then you've put two quartz crystals to link to show the overlap between the different chakras. So we've got heart, high heart throat and their overlap areas represented by proxy crystals yes Great. and i'm going to be working um i'm going to be working on the energy field because um, when i tuned into myself to see what would be correct for me that was the answer that i got uh, so i've just got i've made the representation of the chakras bigger because on this crystal it would only be yay big and so that doesn't give me a lot of space to work so this just expands my workspace um, so that I can um, better see what's going on and it's a little bit just less awkward. It gives um, you much better access. It's it's hard to work in a tiny space yeah. for something like this. Yes. So I'm gonna take a moment and just visualize, tune into the crystals and visualize on my mind screen um, what the structures are that are ready to be worked on today. And today I'm actually getting that I'm gonna be working here in the high heart, um, mostly. That's where that's where I'm seeing the most. Um, shadow, I can see it too. Yeah, yeah. I see the shadow. And it's because you already did this demo and so you <laughs> cleared that area. I, I was wondering what, what how this was gonna look compared to the other day when we first saw this. And I'm, I mean, I'm, both, I'm pleased that it looks different. <laughs> I am too, and it, but it, and it, and then and I can see it, but I, and nobody else can, so we can proceed to the, the to the next step. I think, yeah, step, Good. yeah. So I've got Vivianite tool, and I'm choosing this one with a feather shaped blade for me today. Oh, something that I that I forgot to say earlier, but that I want to say now is that another aspect of a really good tool is that it should fit in your hand well. Right. It should be Isn't that the truth. That's how you know when it's yours. You sort of immediately just know how to hold it and it knows how to connect with you. Yeah. Because the tool really needs to become an extension of your own energy system, just the same as tools are an extension of our physical hands in, uh, you know, physical reality. These tools are the extension of our etheric capacities in the energy realm. Yeah. And I have found often when I pick up a tool stone, I'll pick it up and immediately start making making a movement. Movements, yes. Right, yes. like as I'm holding it and thinking about it, I'll find my hand moving and I'm like, oh, and that's, it's showing me, it's it's showing me how it works. Yes, yes, um, yes. It's, and it's, it's because, communicating, correct. Speaking of crystals communicating, I brought this crystal as a visual tool for something that is spectacular, but not a very good tool stone because it's very heavy and large. And it was saying, uh, show me off. So. No, absolutely, because some, some stones, we just fall in love with them, but tools need to be light enough. Yeah. And this has many, many wonderful applications. But again, your arm would get very tired if you tried to use this. <laughs> Correct. But it looks like a good energy generating stone. You could use it for that. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, it likes to, it wants to show off in the room. It's, I need to get it like a good stand. No, I see you stroking it like a cat. And I thought I was the only one who was so stupid as to stroke my crystals as if they pit. <laughs> you know, recently one of my clients was like, do you have a cat over there? And I was like, no, it's just my crystal. <laughs> 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 do. Oh there's God. crazy cat ladies and crazy crystal <laughs> ladies and then crazy crystal cat ladies <laughs> and i'm definitely the last one of those <laughs> oh good all, all right. right so i'm gonna tune back in there we go um and for the vivianite technique so i've already um ascertained what 
area of this stone I'm going to use, and it's the feather blade here. And we're going to work in a radial pattern, uh, and I'm going to be working over the high heart with it, that being the center uh, of my circle. And we start with a scraping. So I'm going to start. Uh, I'm going to start here so that you can see, and I'm not blocking my hand with the camera. <laughs> All right, so. I'm going to take a moment and just find the place where I connect best with the etheric tissue, which for me is about this high. And then we'll spray it down. And clean. I have my bowl. Ooh, and this is really thick here. It's got a strong texture, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. This actually is a little bit more like the clay that we were looking at because it's very bumpy. Yeah. Um, it's bumpy and thick. So of the three examples that I showed you, that's the one that's most relevant to just this piece right here. Yes. And just like the clay, I'm actually going to move past it. I took a layer off and I'm going to keep coming around. So I've got another thick bump on this right here. That one's very intense. Um, and you're working on yourself, but you don't dare pay attention to how it feels. You've got to pay attention to the kinesthesia of the work that you're doing, not the work that you're receiving. Yeah. So, so when I'm saying that's intense, I mean, I'm feeling a really intense thing in the crystal here in my hand. Like yes. it's so thick, it feels. Um, right. It's um, your own kinesthetic sense that's picking up the information. Yeah. And specifically because this is this, this uh, scraping pushing action, what I'm getting is a lot of resistance, mm. which you can see I'm sort of having to come through very particularly to peel a little bit off. Yeah. The stone wants to work this way. Actually, I want to give several stones a turn, so I'm going to switch to one of my other blades. So this is the same action, same thing, um, but with a different tool, um, but a similar bladed tool, and it's saying I missed a spot. There we are. Yeah, I see that tool's getting a little bit in underneath and sort of lifting as you're going, mm -hmm. whereas the other one you were having to push against it. Yeah, so it's a, and that's because of the different shapes, right? They're all going to have a slightly different action based on their shape. So that one has a different shape of blade. Correct. Yeah, this just like real bit. life tools. Yeah. yeah, this is thin, more like a, like a razor blade. Um, so it, it does, it's... It's a little bit closer to the paint scraper tool. So it's actually also shaves. Yes. Like a blade, like a razor blade does for shaving a beard or something. Yeah. There's another thick spot. And that thick spot actually doesn't want. It actually felt like that thick spot came off in a clump because Sometimes you got underneath it. I, I, it, I felt it in my gut. It was like, oh, good. We got rid of that big glob of, <laughs> of, of what we don't want. <laughs> so I'm going to do a little bit of work with this um, hooked tool to do some of that picking work. And this line here is where I'm feeling. Put that there. So there's a little bit less. There we go. So this is connecting, and if you you can see this on my diagram, the or on my layout that I've made here, that the um, I'm up in the throat chakra, right? Because there's my throat stone. So so Anastasia, I want to just comment that you um, have several different Vivianite tools, but you can also use the same tool in different ways from different angles. Yeah. You don't have to have seven of the same tool. Yeah. And 
so this I did this entire technique with this tiny piece of Vivianite for many, many years, how, however long it's been since I learned this originally, because this is my my only one. And it's not so it's a little bit thick, so it, it doesn't really have a sharp blade edge, but you use your intention to help sort of compensate for that. So I, I pick an edge here that I've nominated to be the scraping blade and it's great, right? I already went over this, so I'm not catching a whole lot with this tool, but that's because I did it, um, not yes. because it doesn't connect. But you're demonstrating how you can use the same tool in a variety of manners. You just use different edges of it. And then it does have a part that's kind of pointy. So if I come into what I was just doing with the hook, so that was, right. there we are. So this wants to work like this. And it takes a little bit longer. I will say that, that, but it doesn't work less well. It just takes a little more time. That's the difference. Um, and what you do is just talk to the tool and say, okay, well, what, what piece of this tool wants to work like a hook? What piece of this tool wants to work like a blade? And you, and you work with the stone to figure out how it can do those things, right? So again, not so fancy, really tiny, but just as effective for doing the technique. I think uh, that piece of Vivianite costs somewhere in the range of eight to twelve dollars. If I, I don't remember correctly. Yeah. But we couldn't get them anymore. The those those Vivianite blades that we had were from a lot, and then there was no more. And then a new pocket of incredible tools was found last year in Tucson. Tucson twenty it was this year, wasn't it? Twenty twenty two. Yeah. Yeah, it was 2022. Just, yeah. yeah. So um, everybody wants to work. So I'm going to give one more crystal a chance. <laughs> Are they and showing think, off? That's what they do. They love to show off. They love mm. to show off. And actually, my 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 wrench shaped tool. So this is this mm -hmm. at the top for unlocking. So. When I look at this uh, area, I've scraped off a lot from around the whole circle, but there's still a little bit of a lump in the middle. And that is very, and I can just come in. There we go. And that, um, I'm actually both seeing and feeling that it released some some schmutz we're going to call it into the energy field and i'm going to clean up immediately well, that's a detox wand with the hematite coated quartz on the one end and the uvite with magnesite on the other end yeah. but you can that's see how pattern. you vacuum in a grid in a grid pattern mm -hmm. so that see it working is great yeah well it and it was sort of almost like a like a geyser of um, toxic material that just needed to be cleaned up when I took that that yes. lump out. There we go. And I'm going over with the purpose as well. Here. Removing negativity, right? Mm hmm And you'll see I moved higher into the field with the perba, and that was just because this is the place where I feel the strongest connection. And I always ask whenever I bring a tool into the field, where is the spot, right? And you might even see me if you watch me work, sort of feeling around like that, and it's here. It's nice for me to watch a perba action. You'll see it literally deletes mm -hmm. the negativity, the negative imprint on the energy field. It just erases it like an eraser. I've never seen that before because I'm usually doing it, not watching it. And it's a different experience, right? <laughs> it's totally different. Now I know why people like watching this stuff. It's really interesting. Um, all right. So I'm going to uh, not do any more removal now. Um, and we'll, this is a piece of kunzite and it just wants to be here. So I'm going to. I'm actually going to put it on the other proxy crystal because it won't slide around as much. So I'm connecting it to the same area, but I've got a flatter surface there. And then I've got my white wand. So we've got metamorphosis quartz and white apophyllite on the other side. 
and I'm just going to paint over the entire area. So I'm filling in uh, wherever I've removed um, etheric tissue from or negativity with white light. This white one really likes to show off. It's um, it's been on whenever it's on camera, it's like amplifies all of this, and it's a fantastic wand all of the time. But it's like extra sparkly for you. <laughs> I'm glad you're noticing that too, because I have noticed when giving a demonstration, the energies get amplified fantastically as all the stones show off and the wands show off and the and the spirit guides come in nice and strong. Yeah. It's, it's a uh, very supportive feeling. I'm always a little anxious at the beginning, but then and then all the other energy dynamics take over and it it's so fun. It is. That's infusion, right? Yep. And this is a piece of kunzite. So you're infusing the kunzite energy of love and strength to the heart by doing that action yeah and i feel like i really this is a the support stone is a piece of kunzite as well um yes and i really i feel i feel and see the energy field just lighting up as i come over especially the area yes. where i move the most material yeah. so um, we call that skill in an energy field infusion yeah it's going over the whole area and you're putting both the color and the and the um wavelength into the energy field great right and that's the demo is it that is that is i've reached my point of completion so if you have any other if there are any other questions or anything else that i should address <laughs> i think i inserted my questions as we went along thank you anastasia that You're was welcome. so wonderful this is fun. <laughs> yeah. So there we are, everyone. What a fabulous demonstration. Thank a great big thank you to Anastasia for giving us her time and expertise and all the preparation that went into putting that demonstration together. Thank you very, very, very much. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. <laughs>